Hello everybody, this is Renee from Paramount Solutions. We're located in Orlando, Florida. We actually are a business that specializes in booking telephone psychic readings for our clients. We look for accurate readers who are clairvoyant, psychic mediums, some can use tarot cards, some of them use spirit guides, it just depends on what you're looking for. We can usually find somebody who really does connect with you and give you a lot of good information. Uh, so you can use it in your life. Um, we actually love what we do. We've been doing this for a very long time, and we would love to help you find a reader that can work for you. You can call us at 1-800-966-2294. I actually have many things that I wanted to go over today. The first thing, of course, is to recognize the summer solstice. We are just wanted to recognize the energy of the earth and thankful for this longest day of the year and all the sunshine and happiness that it brings. Um, also, the sun actually entered cancer today, which, um, so for all of our cancer friends, you have birthdays coming up, we wanted to say happy birthday. Um, th we actually also wanted to go over signs that you could be a psychic medium. Um, many people are very inclined psychically, and we have a lot of questions from clients asking us all the time on whether or not uh, they, are, they are possibly psychic and or what kind of psychic they are. Um, there are many different types of readers and how they pick up on energy is very different depending on which what the readers do. Um, specifically today we want to focus on psychic mediums and how you might know just some keys and some clues that you might be a psychic medium yourself. Um, when you uh, remember uh, when you're growing up a lot of things that kind of help know if you're a psychic medium is a lot of the signals that pop up when you're a child. Um, for instance, you might remember feeling or, spe or seeing spirits or energy when you were young. Uh, maybe you had an imaginary friend that is definitely a sign of a psychic medium. Your, your imaginary friend maybe wasn't made up. It was actually probably just a spirit that was around you that you could actually sp physically speak to before you got older and maybe didn't quite believe in it as, as much um, or you know kind of got away from that energy a little bit. Um, then when you go back and think about it, then it's like, oh my gosh, that was probably a spirit. So if you have an imaginary friend, that's really important. Um, another way to tell is that you're related to somebody with a gift. Um, it does not always pass down directly onto the next of kin uh, to somebody who has a gift, the gift. Most of the time it does, but you know, sometimes it could be like your aunt or your uncle that maybe had the gift um, and then somehow it got passed on to you genetically. Um, you do not necessarily have to know that it was passed on genetically in order for you to be a psychic medium. Um, you can actually just uh, figure it out on your own. Even though people before you in your family may have had that ability, uh, you might not have known or they might not have explored that too much. And so genetics is not always the number one key factor, but it is important, it does help. Um, the people who are psychic mediums often report that they have major sleep disturbances or they have uh, major issues falling asleep or they wake up around 3 a.m. That's a big key, 3 a.m. is a very important time of evening to wake up or nighttime to wake up if you're a psychic medium because the uh, energy is a little bit clearer for the spirits to come through and, and actually speak to you. Um, a lot of people like to write down their notes and their first impression when they wake up at 3 a.m. Um, sometimes that can actually impede you from sleeping any longer because then you're wide awake. Um, so if you have insomnia issues, you do want to talk to your doctor first and then explore your spiritual connection <laughs> with the other side. Um, a lot of times people who are psychic mediums and or inclined to psychic mediumship ability, they uh, feel loads of energy when they go into a cemetery, uh, when they pick up old furniture or go antiquing, um, when they feel somebody's um, clothes and or objects that belong to them, maybe a watch or a ring. Um, they also, old buildings can be a little bit, you know, disturbing for them until they figure out their gift. Um, so, you know, definitely having certain feelings when you walk into a certain place definitely can, can signal psychic mediumship ability. Old cities and sites of disasters uh, are very difficult for people who have psychic mediumship ability. I have heard of people not being able to go to Gettysburg. Um, a lot of people at the 9-11 uh, site in New York, uh, just really not not being able to even be around that area because there's just so much energy that was really heart wrenching, and they feel that, and they don't, you know, it's just re it's really difficult for them to shake that energy. Um, another kind of fun one is, um, and this might happen a lot of times, like especially if you lose a pet or you lose somebody that you love, but you see shadows and or you know just something out of the corner of your eye that is just like, gosh, what was that? And you kind of think, gosh, was that 
you know, was that an energy? Uh, but something out of the corner of your eye can definitely, you know, just kind of, you don't really see it. Maybe just a shadow or, you know, maybe the, the wind blew a little bit, something. But you do know that there was something there um, that can definitely, you know, signify mediumship ability and or being able to communicate with the other side. Um, feelings uh, with somebody who is a psychic medium and or has ability for psychic mediumship, feelings can be overwhelming at times. They actually feel so much that that actually can also contribute to the sleep disturbances and or anxiety that, that people have that are uh, inclined towards psychic medium ability. Um, so if you have a lot of feelings, you're very somebody who really, really feels deeply, that's actually a strength, even though you might not see it that is first. Um, that's actually a strength and you can definitely use that to tune into your intuition a bit more and become either more clairvoyant and or more of a psychic medium. Um, a natural connection to animals. Um, you feel empathy towards animals. You can actually physically, you feel like you can communicate with them. You feel like uh, they're, you're just kindred spirits with animals. That's another way um, of mediumship. Um, you basically, sometimes animals will actually go out of the way to find you. Um, you know, if they sense your energy. So that's kind of neat too. Um, want to say hello to all of our followers. Nice to see y'all here. Um, here's another way is that um, you identify more with the energy a person has versus, you know, the concrete data that you have about the person. You know, like let's say that you meet somebody and they are known to be the top uh, seller of the area or this or that. However, when you meet them, it's more about their energy and what they convey um, and that's more how you, I guess, form your opinion of that person, not necessarily by their titles or what, what has been told to you about these people. It's more about the energy that they're bringing. Uh, and a good way to uh, also know if you're a psychic medium is, is to pay attention to your dreams. Your dreams are often symbolic, vivid. Um, they could even, you know, be the, the place, you know, the first place that you are where you're getting psychic visions and or psychic mediumship abilities. Um, dreams are a, a, you know, a place where you're a little bit more vulnerable to your thoughts and your emotions. Um, and so some of it can come out. So dreams are definitely something you should pay attention to. Um, even if you're looking into being more clairvoyant or something in, or spirit guides or anything like that, dreams are definitely a good way to, to figure out your psychic ability. Um, you may have been a bit of a loner growing up and or felt a little bit away from the crowd. Um, you definitely always have your own space. I think that we all have our own space within ourselves um, that we either, you know, talk to, talk to ourselves or, and or do pep talks or whatever you need to do in your daily life. However, for people who are psychic mediums, they kind of stand, are a little bit standoffish with everybody else. And it's basically because they pick up on so much energy that they kind of just have to have a little bit of a bubble around them. Um, another good way to realize if you are psychic medium, you're somebody that other people go to for advice and or comfort, um, and you give very good advice. Um, that is definitely a very, um, very good psychic ability in general. Um, but it's also, you have just a natural wisdom and a natural way to understand energy of other people. Um, people would describe you as an old soul. Um, there's a lot of different ways to look at that. However, it's usually somebody, you know, with a psychic medium, they're just kind of, they just immediately, they're kind of solid in their, you know, where their heart is and they definitely give good advice and really help, help other people out. Um, people with psychic mediumship abilities, actually with empathic abilities and clairvoyant abilities also, um, often have times with, with large crowds of people and it's basically because there's so much energy around them that that can be a little bit difficult. <laughs> so definitely large crowds and having difficulties in large crowds is, uh, is definitely a signal, signal, signal of psychic mediumship and or some sort of psychic ability. Um, anxiety, um, having anxiety about different things, that can definitely help. That can definitely be a part of it. Um, and then the other thing is that with psychic mediumship is you really might not fully understand your, I guess your, um, what am I gonna say, your, your gift until you have some sort of spiritual awakening. Um, sometimes it can be going through a difficult time, you know, when you're young or, you know, at some point in your life. Um, and then you just kind of find, you know, your, your ground of where you stand with it and you get the energy and then you start realizing exactly how you can interpret that energy. Um, but it is definitely a spiritual awakening. 
Um, and that's basically about it for all of my signs and signals that I have today. I hope that you're all having a wonderful week. Uh, there is a new moon on Friday. So that's exciting. And of course, you know, the sun went into cancer. We have the summer solstice. So things are looking up. Um, if you would like to get a reading and or have any questions on anything, please give us a call at 1-800-966-2294. If you are watching this on YouTube, we appreciate everybody giving us a thumbs up. Take care and we hope you have a great week. Thank you.